So I wanted to start this video off with a question. When it comes to iOS and iPadOS widgets, for you, are they useful? Are they a gimmick? Are they somewhere in between where you use them more for aesthetic purposes? Let me know in the comment down below because in this video, what I'm gonna do is show you guys my 15 most used iPadOS widgets that I use, I would say anywhere from a daily or a weekly basis. And I have a home screen that's fully dedicated for these iPadOS widgets. Yes, these widgets will work on your iPhone, on iOS. I just like to use them on my iPad because that's where I like to get most of my work done. And you'll see that they are categorized based on how I use them, whether it is leisure, productivity and anywhere in between but without further ado let's talk about these 15 iPadOS and iOS widgets which I'm going to highly recommend and they'll all be linked down in order for you guys to check out let's get into it Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And I do want to preface this by saying I'm using an M1 iPad Pro running 17.4. And again, this will work or all these widgets will be available for any iPhone that's running 17.4. And I am using the free version of all these applications. Some of these widgets do have some paid versions, which I kind of unlock even more widgets, but I am using the free versions of them. And now this right here is my actual native home screen. And I am working on a focus mode kind of oriented type video that changes each of these home screens. But for right now, as the way that it stands when I'm ready to go to actual work I kind of just move over here and this is the holy grail of my 15 widgets that I've been using on a daily and weekly basis for the last couple months now and I'm gonna start from top left all the way down to bottom right to kind of show you guys exactly what's going on and also if you are on the iPad and you want to use these just so you are fully aware the first thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually move these widgets around and they don't have to kind of stay on that home grid that we've kind of grown accustomed to when it comes to regular applications so if you want to grab a widget and just move it over and put it wherever you want on the screen it'll stay there which is great to see and that's something that came over with iOS or iPad OS 17.0 when it comes to iOS 17.0, you can still not do that with widgets. Only on iPadOS 17.0 or newer, it's going to work that way. But now let's get right into the first widget, which is going to be my plus size or the larger size Notion widget. Now, I'm not somebody that created our Notion dashboard. Shout out Jeff Benjamin for actually creating that Notion dashboard because it's immensely helpful. But this is exactly what's going on when it comes to Notion and what we're looking at. So if I tap on one of these, this is technically an interactive widget. I can't actually see anything outside of this, but you can tap on certain aspects of this Notion widget, like for instance, if I want to go into the brainstorming section, it'll take me directly to the brainstorming section of our Notion board to let you guys know exactly what kind of video ideas we have going on or article ideas. And then you can also do the same thing, for instance, if you do the video schedule, it'll take you to that section of the video schedule to let you guys know what types of videos are coming out or let us know what videos are coming out and when they're coming out. So this does work, again, it is interactive technically because it'll take you to that specific portion of the actual video itself. So you can see here, best iPad OS widgets 2024. So that's what makes it interactive for now. Now it does come in a couple of different other sizes and the way to actually add it is just pressing the plus button scrolling down to where it says Notion, and you can see that there are a few different size Notion widgets, but I like to use the larger one when it comes to recents right here. So this does reorganize itself based on recents. So you can see that now the best iPadOS widget is up there, and that is the Notion widget, which is something that I use on a daily basis over and over again. So now as we go to the next one, which is right underneath the Notion widget, and you can see that this is kind of divvied up into three different columns for me. So this left column right here has everything to do with work and video creation and making these videos. You'll see the middle and the right-hand column in a little bit. So this one is by a company called Timer or an app called Timery, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? You go into the application itself, you create some saved timers that you want to create for yourself, and you can actually start it directly from here. So if I want to start my video ideation kind of time resetting to actually get it to start actually recording how long I've been working on it, you can see that now my video ideation has started. I like to spend about 20 to 30 minutes every morning or maybe at least on Monday mornings to see exactly what types of videos we will be making this week. And it'll start to get countdown in real time. And then after you're done with it, you can kind of go in and update it and kind of see how it's been going. You can see your time entries. You can see the save timers and how this one's still going. And then you can get a summary report of this week and next week. Again, there are some paid features to this application, which I don't really mess with because I don't want to. But if you are somebody that wants to see what you've been spending your time on and things like that, outside of this widget right here, Timer is a great one, but it also lets you know that you are kind of staying focused in that actual mode, which is great to see. So if you guys want to check out Timer, I will link it down below. I'm going to let this keep running in the background so you guys can see that it is an actual live interactive widget. But the next one is going to be a native application by Apple, Reminders. Reminders is one of the first Apple native applications to be an interactive widget. And you can see right here that I have a couple things on the actual shot list, which I have right here. So for instance, film iPad B-roll, get footage of using the widgets, which is what we're doing now, get some footage of the interactive widgets, and you can see that in real time, it does change up. Now, for instance, you can actually navigate and kind of edit this widget itself by holding it down. 
deciding what you want it to actually show. So for instance, I do have my shot list here, but if you do want to do something from today or something scheduled, or maybe a grocery list or an Amazon list, you can do that as well. Because once you're done with it, you can click in here. You can actually have different categories of reminders in your reminders app, which is great to see. So you can continue to add lists. And if you have a particular list that works on a particular time, you can decide to show that list in your actual widget space. So these all have to do with productivity, which is again, my end all be all. I use these all the time on a daily basis to make sure that I can get what I need to get done and get it done on time. So now let's move into the center column, which I'm calling kind of like my management column or my, you know, at a glance information column, whatever you guys want to call it. Obviously the weather, I like to know what's going on because I want to know what I'm wearing in the morning. I got to take out my dog a couple times a day. So if it's cold, I like to make sure that I'm wearing a jacket without having to go outside to realize that it's cold. But it's very self-explanatory. That is a native weather widget by Apple. I know that there's a bunch of other ones, but I like to keep it simple. And the Apple weather app is actually very robust now, which I love to see. So you can kind of jump into each one of these categories and jump into them. And also they have more than just the regular widget right here. So if I want to go down into weather, they have a bunch of different options like forecast. Then you also have details, which is cool. Daily forecast, sunrise and sunset. So there's a bunch of different widgets that they do offer if you do want to get a little bit more granular or specific information. Now, my next one is also going to be another Apple widget, which is screen time. And I know that that's a running theme, but Apple makes great widgets. But you'll see on the right hand side is all third party ones. But the time one is just I want to make sure that I'm not spending too much time on any screen, especially when it comes to leisure activities. Obviously, for work, we got to be on screens nowadays. But if you just click on here, I want to make sure that my screen time is actually low over time, or at least I'm spending my actual screen time on something productive versus just kind of wasting my time on something that I shouldn't be doing. That is very self-explanatory and it does come with a bunch of different ones as well. And then I have my HomeKit widget. Now this is what I use to kind of manage all the lights in the house and things like that. You can see that I have eight different options. I have a couple lights. I have my Echo B, which is on here. Edit the widget itself and to show the recommended. And then Apple also includes some different size ones. So if I want to go into HomeKit, because I've been working on a HomeKit video to let you guys know what it looks like for me to have kind of a fully integrated living room space that's all controlled via HomeKit. But you can see that you have a bunch of accessory ones, which is great to see. And Apple just keeps adding more things to HomeKit, which is awesome. I do wish that Apple gave us a widget to see our live video feed, because for instance, I do, if I go into HomeKit, if I go into the application itself, I do have a video feed or a video cam camera by Abode, and I wish I could use this as a widget and get a live feed of what I'm actually seeing in real time. And then the last one in this column, again, more of just kind of like an at a glance information and management things that I like to see, and is tracking my Miami Heat. And it usually tracks the most recent sports team that I actually follow. So as of right now, the Miami Heat have a game tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Philadelphia 76ers, but to each their own, I'm a big Heat fan, of course. But this is by an app called SofaScore, but it first came out as more more of a European football type of kind of tracking app, but little by little they added more and more sports, but you can see they have every sport under the sun. So football, rugby, badminton, like I mentioned, basketball, which is what I'm following now. So that's great to see. Now I do wish that Apple had their own widget or own live activities for their new Apple sports app, but I'm sure that will come with time. But for right now, SofaScore is the one that I recommend the absolute most. So now let's go to the right hand side. And this is going to be the smallest ones when it comes to the widget sizes. And they're mostly again, utilitarian type applications or widgets that give me information at a glance or something that kind of helps me in a pickle whenever I need to. So the first one is going to be my countdown application. This one, again, you can just click on it, add whatever countdown you want. As you can see, this isn't an optimized iPad app. This is mostly for iOS, but for the actual purposes of it, it works exactly the same. So you can add some countdowns. Again, this is a free version, so you can only do one countdown at a time. If you do want to add more countdowns, it is a $3.99 one-time purchase, which honestly isn't that bad in terms of pricing to you know help out a developer and things like that. You can add different sizes, as you can see. And again, we just have a 15-day countdown for a Europe trip, which is going to be awesome. So I actually added this background and edited it on my own by going into my pictures and kind of saving that one. You can also change the type, but again, a lot of these are going to be more on the paid side. You can also change the font and text, make it thin, big, or whatever the case may be. I'm going to go back to this one because, again, I'm not paying for it. I'm going to go in this France logo. We'll press save. We'll press not now. Swipe up. And then you can see that it does optimize or at least update in real time. So that is my countdown app, and you can do it for anything that you want. Then there is the Apple Podcast app, which is also another native widget. And what I like about this one is that it still is interactive. And since Apple makes it, you can actually just press the play button to start playing the actual podcast itself directly from the widget itself, which is very cool. Versus something like Spotify, Spotify does have a widget and I'm a Spotify user for the most part, but it's not interactive. So if you do tap on the Spotify widget itself, it's going to take you to the application. But something like the Apple Podcast app or the Apple Music app, there is a play button right on the widget itself for you to interact with it and use it in real time. And now my next widget is by an app called Usage, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It gives you some analytics and stats in real time of what's going on. So for instance, this particular widget 
shows you how much RAM is being used. And you can see that 5.77 gigs of RAM is being used in real time. And I only have about 100 or 200 megabytes left. And if you click on here, you get even more analytics and you get to actually open up whichever one of these that you want. And again, they do have a pro version or a paid version, which I actually used to have and I absolutely loved. But this is one of the ones where I would recommend paying if you are somebody that likes to look at these types of statistics. So you have your memory right here. So it's designed with 7.85, but honestly, we only get to use six of those gigs, which is kind of crazy and mind blowing to see on M1 iPad Pro. I do have the baseline model. We can see in real time how much Wi-Fi is being used, how much you're sending, how much you're receiving battery life in real time, the device type that you have down here, the last time you rebooted it, the data, the internal data. You kind of have a bunch of different widgets you can choose from. It gives you more specs, the widgets. Now you can kind of customize it how you see fit eventually if you do pay for the pro version, but they do have a bunch. So if I long press and press the plus sign, go down to where it says usage over here, you can see that there are a few, again, some of them are locked up, but the ones that aren't locked up are things like the actual battery life, you know, then you also have the one that I'm using, which is the memory. You also have the actual storage one, which is right here. So depending on what you want to use it for, you can then get that done. The next one is by an app called Calculator 17. Why it's called Calculator 17, I have no idea, but it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a calculator. So if I clear that out, you can now type in 25 times 25 or 35, press the equal sign, 875. So it's just a calculator for the iPad itself. And it does come in multiple sizes. So if I want to long press here, press the plus button, go to calculator... 17 and they do have the larger version over here which is way easier to type on but i like to have the smaller one because if i do have my apple pencil which i have right here because i can just grab the apple pencil and get a little bit more precise on what i'm doing as you can see and now these next two are kind of the health ones that i have this first widget right here is a heart analyzer widget so you can see that i have real-time data because again it's talking to my apple watch so it does have real-time data of my actual you know beats per minute and things like that and it syncs across all of your apple health kit devices which is good to see so you get a bunch more analytics and stuff which i you know i've been loving all the health data that you now get on the ipad since ios 17 or ipad os 17 which is great to see you have your insights your metrics your dashboard and again you can choose a bunch of different actual widgets that actually portray exactly what you want so if i go down to the heart analyzer you have your resting heart rate which you can toggle in between with the larger widgets you have the single widgets which i have right here because i like to see that you can see that there's a bunch of different widget choices you get to have now this next one is actually water minder and you can see that i haven't actually logged my water intake in the last hour and a half i'm gonna actually press these little dots right here and we'll say that i had about eight ounces of water in the last couple minutes swipe back up and now you can see that i'm at 32 ounces of water which is about 33 percent of the amount of water that it was recommended that i have so this is just a way to remind you to actually drink your water during the day because i know that we sit down a lot and we don't actually have time to remember to drink water trust me we easily forget to drink our water which is crazy to think about but that is just watery it's just a water reminder app which does go a little bit more in depth if you want to and i believe they also have a paid version but again i'm using the free one now this next one right here is by Pixel Pal. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a Pal or a pixelated Pal that you have on your screen. This one's one of their newer games, quote unquote, but it's mostly just like a fidget spinner equivalent. You just kind of just press this little arrow over here to kind of move you over and see how far you can get. And you just keep going and see how far your score can actually accumulate. But if you actually long press, they have a bunch of different games as well. So if you long press, add a new one, let's go to Pixel Pals. You have a bunch of little games that you can play with, like actually feeding your pet. You have little trivia questions that you can answer, things like that in terms of maybe also translation so you can actually learn things. Oh, a bunch of little games over here, which you know I'm not gonna go too in depth with, but 2048 is also there. So just some like games that you can pass the time with that you can now interact with on your home screen. And now the last widget, which I've actually recently added, this is probably my most recent one, is by an app called Lookup. So Lookup is just a vocab app. It gives you a word of the day, which is right here, insidious and exactness. It kind of rotates between the two. But then also that you can actually search and actually it's basically just a dictionary. And you can actually have another widget, which I didn't add because I don't actually use it too often. But it's a cool one to still show off, which is being able to scroll over here and then actually have a... A little bit of a larger widget which allows you to search for words in real time and you can actually scan the words by tapping on that scan word and then actually scan the word that you're looking up and then it gives you the actual definition but those are the 15 widgets that are on this home screen that i use on a daily basis or weekly basis because it kind of helps me stay focused on what i'm doing you have your productivity you kind of have your management and kind of you know at a glance information and then you have your more of utility information that you have on the right hand side and a little bit of leisure down here so insidious which is proceeding in a gradual way with very harmful effects a new word if you guys aren't aware of that word but let's finish up this video and get out of here 
So that will just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, I have widgets that serve a bunch of different purposes. I have the left side of my screen, which is mostly for productivity, the right side, which is more like utilitarian and gives you a little bit of insight of how I use it for leisure, and then the middle of it, mostly for informational purposes and for controlling and management of the house for both personal and work reasons. So there's a method to the madness, even though it just looks like a big kind of square full of widgets, I know exactly what I'm doing and how I actually use them. And like I said, every widget that I mentioned will be linked down in the description below for you guys to check out. None of the developers knew that I was making this video, so I wanted to give you guys my honest opinion on all of these widgets overall. But that's going to do it for this video. If you have some widget recommendations that I should check out, and maybe I'll do maybe a version 2.0, let me know with a comment down below because I'm always looking for more widgets to kind of add to my workflow and mix and match to see exactly what I can do because I didn't really touch on smart stacking, which I can really do and you can have almost an infinite amount of widgets on one home screen. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to watch more iPadOS, macOS, iOS, or VisionOS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Enjoy all these widgets.